you're not scared out of your mind when you're taking a job that's probably not challenging you enough. And I was scared out of my mind, I'll be honest. Four plays, only two errors, ten kills for her. Why not us? Like, like, why not be one of those top teams in the nation at this point? You see programs with tradition, and sometimes you look and you say, hey, the talent's not so great, but the expectation is we're going to do this every year. Back to Jay Lee, yes! Jay Lee winners ties it. Getting Sokol Arena in the Ryan Center was huge. I mean, uh, we went from a, you know, an older facility in the Civic that was cavernous with 9,000 seats to one of the premier facilities in the country. Creighton's volleyball accommodations weren't always so pleasant. The Jays restarted the program in 1994, only finishing over 500 three times in the first nine years. They bottomed out in 2002 when they went just three and 23 while playing at Omaha South High School. Playing at Omaha South probably was a deal breaker. As much as I wanted the job, you know, you only get so many head coach opportunities, and if you don't feel like you can be successful there. Um, so yes, it was talked about a lot. It had been determined before I interviewed they were moving, so it wasn't that I negotiated that. Um, but that was a big deal, a very big deal. With a new place to play, the Jays were looking for a new face to lead their program. I was at Kirkwood Community College, and I was looking, honestly, at a lot of Division II schools. I loved Kirkwood. Um, Terry Pettit, the you know godfather of Nebraska volleyball, uh, I played high school with his daughter, and then I'd worked their camps. So I knew Coach Pettit a little bit, and a lot of ADs seek out Coach Pettit's advice. So uh, I think. No one else wanted the job, so they uh, threw out my name. And uh, you know, I was I was a young kid and very very green, and um, feel really blessed that that Coach Pettit gave my name and that uh, Bruce Rasmussen took a risk on me. Uh, let's grab a quick drink. Things that stood out to me was we were moving to the Civic, so we had a court a home court to recruit to rather than Omaha South. We were fully funded. So we had 12 scholarships. I think that is huge for success. I walked into a team that had lost, and yes, there were some cultural things, but they were a disciplined program. I actually expected more dysfunction when I got here, and it, it really was, they worked hard, and they were awesome young women, and I, I'm a big believer, if you are a new coach, it is not my job to run those, those players out. Kirsten Bernthal Boo's faith was rewarded. The turnaround began quickly. Nine win improvement, year one a record-setting 18 wins the very next season. I think one of the big things that I do well is hire great people. <laughs> and uh, went after two people. I went after Paul Gieselman. He was tied into the local area. And Paul was about 10 years older than me, so he, and he'd been a head coach, so he had some of that experience that I lack. And then the other thing is I had a GA position, and we went after a Husker. I mean, I, I explicitly set out to try to find a Husker, called Angie Oxley, um, who was, you know, captain of Nebraska's 2000 national team. And Angie's been with me the entire time. So those two kind of built things. And then when, when Paul took the Midland job, um, you know, I hired Tom Mendoza, and Tom has just taken us to another level. We try to create some fundamental values of the program. The same way you build a family, you know, around some of those same um, integrity and trust and, and teamwork and, you know, and then we try to role model, that, role model that as a staff. She doesn't only care about us as athletes, she cares about us as people. Um, and her goal is obviously to better us on the court, but also to provide a support for us. Kirsten has a great style of coaching. Um, it really is. She lets us make the mistakes, and then she will tell us what we did wrong. I don't know. <laughs> Whatever she's doing, it's working. She really lets us um, come up with our own ideas, and if she likes them, she'll tell us, and we'll keep incorporating them, and if she doesn't like them, she will tell us too, and we will not incorporate them anymore. I wouldn't call her a yeller, but you know definitely what she's expecting from you, and you know when you've disappointed her. When I came in, um, sometimes I tried to be who I wasn't, you know, and, and specifically to that, like I watched Dana Altman coach and he maybe a little bit more fiery and so sometimes I would try to do that and that's not really my, my personality. Um, I mean, I can get fired up but I'm not a screamer, you know. I have to be true to myself because I think if you fake who you are um, or try to be, you know, something else, uh, the players can see through that. Her coaching style kept the results positive and eventually in 2009, 
DJ Soap Arena arrived to help out even more. When we started, we had about 50 fans, and now, you know, we're at close to 1,500, you know, and, um, you know, we want to build that. We want it to be, we want to fill this place consistently, and we're getting closer. Playing at home in that big atmosphere, you know, there's, obvi there's a lot of pressure with that, so um, I think it creates a lot of fun, actually, for our players and motivates us. The wins kept coming getting closer to Booth's original goal. For me, that was the NCAA tournament. To me, that was such a lofty goal, and I just, I wanted to experience it in, it's in such a big way. And we were, we were close about two or three times. I, I never felt like we got left out unjustly, but we were maybe last four out sort of situation. Um, so I didn't question the process. I knew we were making strides. When we were close a couple times, it was like, oh. Maybe next year it's going to fall apart because, you know, you have this feeling of, okay, we got to start over in January, and it goes back to zero. I believed this after seeing tape that, that we could be competitive against Iowa State and could pull off the upset. After the win, I was just, it's still kind of so surreal to, like, be here even this morning when we're going through the training and stuff and, like, looking at a little participant pass, I was like, we're here, like this is it, it was very emotional for me. I don't know if the players knew how emotional. And it wasn't about that team. As much as I loved that team and that they made it, it was about the seven, eight years prior to that. We want to build off the foundation that we set last year. And we, every year we've kind of set this foundation. We finally pushed through last year and made it to the tournament. And that's definitely our goal to get back there again this year. I come from teams where I'm used to winning. So of course that was what I've expected to do here. And of course we're going to make the NCAA tournament. That's just what I've always thought. There was never really a question about that. Our expectations on and off the court have been again, increasing every single year. So we just keep raising our goal level higher and higher. Now that I think we've created that that's the norm. I mean, if, you know, we'll get in this year, but if next year we're bubble or don't get in, it, it'll devastate the crew because that's, that's a big goal. I think teams don't overlook us maybe as much as they used to. Um, and when we're on the court, something we always do bring is energy. So I think they hear us, you know, so I think that brings a statement in itself. Every team should come in knowing that um, we have confidence in ourselves, which makes us a really good team, and if you're going to overlook us, um, that's probably going to come back to get you. From the brink of disaster to the precipice of the Sweet 16, the rise of Creighton Volleyball is still in progress, still looking to fly higher. And that's what we're recruiting players to do. Like when we're recruiting players, like we talk about, we want to, you, we want you to be the first to take us to a Sweet 16, and hopefully that's driving them right now. Just watching our program grow has been amazing, and um, we've had successes and we've had losses, but I'll always remember how tight our teams were through that. We never turned on each other. I think when I took the job, I wanted to survive. I, I, I was thrown into some. I hadn't been an assistant, you know. It was really an atypical path. So I think all I wanted to do was make that team better than it was. I will say this, I, I can't imagine, I know I didn't imagine how lucky I am to be at Creighton and all that. I mean, think of the growth we've had in the time that I've been here. How lucky that this was the time frame that I got to come to Creighton.